Hi guys, Mehnush here from Ross IELTS Academy. I'm here today to talk to you about the latest IELTS speaking questions, the last weeks. It is always a good idea to practice different questions and topics before the test. However, you don't need to worry. When we talk to our candidates, many of them tell us that their main concern in the speaking is that they don't have a very wide range of vocabulary. Tell you what, it's fine. Not everyone has got the vocabulary to talk about all the familiar and unfamiliar topics. Besides, there is no need to have information about everything so that you can answer all the questions. You need strategies. Okay guys, what we want to do today is to take a look at some of the latest IELTS speaking questions part by part and I will give you my answers to them. Then, I will explain why I gave those answers, analyzing them based on IELTS criteria. Okay? Let's get it started. Okay, guys. In this video, we want to take a look at some of the questions and answers in the third part of IELTS speaking test, but the latest ones. In the second part, in the previous video, we talked about a cue card which was asking us to describe a time that we have to wait for something or you had to wait for something. So watch that video first. And then, as this is the third part, we want to just work on some questions related to that topic, waiting for something. Let's see what questions we have today. The first question says, on what occasions do people have to wait every day? The second question says, do you think people who can't wait invent new technologies? And the third one says, do you think in the past people used to be more patient? Why? So we have these three questions. What I want you to do is to think of your own answers to the questions here. So you should take your time and then come back to me so that I can give you my own answers. Then analyzing what I have said. So you can think of your answers now. Did you come up with some ideas? Now let's see how we can give some good answers to these questions. So the first question says, on what occasions do people have to wait every day? My answer is, well, there are endless occasions in people's daily life in which they have to wait. For instance, they would have to wait for the boss, for the school to finish, for the food to be ready or their favorite movie to start. However, I can put these occasions into the two categories of enjoyable waiting and boring waiting as I label them. Like if you should wait for the work day to finish, that would be boring and take you more energy than it should. Nevertheless, Waiting for food to get ready while you're cooking it can be enjoyable. Now the second question says, do you think people who can't wait invent new technologies? My answer is, wow, that is definitely a difficult question. Let me think about it. Um, I think that can be it because if somebody is not patient enough, and of course, if they are determined and decisive, they would look for easier and faster ways to get to what they want. As a result, they can invent something new, but not necessarily technologies. For example, Martin Cooper, the inventor of cell phone, failed several times and even went under before this um, unprecedented success. And it shows that he was patient and he could wait, but he also invented such remarkable appliance. Here the third question says, do you think in the past people used to be more patient? Why? Mm, they absolutely did and that has a clear reason. Their lifestyle was different. These days we have so many responsibilities at work, home or school and we should take care of all of them at the same time. This will result in getting nervous and being in a rush which means not being patient. However, in the past, people used to have less time-consuming tasks, which contributed to a more relaxed life with less occupations. So as their mind was free, they could be more patient as well. This is only my personal opinion on that though. Now let's see what I have used in my answers and of course what techniques I have applied because there are some here. 
In the first question, I was asked to talk about the occasions that people have to wait every day. First, we take a look at the terms and the words or the phrases uh, which are marked in red because these are the vocabulary and collocations that I have used. In the first sentence, I have used endless occasions. Instead of saying many or a lot of, you can say endless. So there are endless occasions in people's daily life. The second one, put them into different categories. You put something into different categories, into different groups, or you categorize different things. The next one, take energy. Something takes energy from you. Like you say, it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time. In my second answer, the question was asking, do you think people who can't wait invent new technologies? First of all, I have used two very good adjectives. The first one is determined and the next one decisive. Determined is a person who makes firm decisions and decisive is a person who can make decisions quickly. The next one, here I have used went under, he went under. Going under is when you lose all you have, your business, your money, your car, everything you have. The next one, unprecedented success, which means a success that was never known or something that was never done before. The next one is remarkable appliance. Remarkable means very important. An appliance is uh, something or a device that is used for a specific task. In the third one, I have used to take care of. Like I say, there are different things in different places that we should take care of instead of using the word do. So, for example, you say today I should take care of different tasks. It means I should do different things. The next one is getting nervous. You get nervous. You get stressed. Being in a rush. That's when you are in a hurry. Time-consuming tasks. It means some tasks that take a lot of time. And occupations. Now taking a look at the phrases or the sentences that are marked in purple. These are the discourse markers, the fillers, and boosters. For example, in the first answer I have used well, or you can say actually, and then start your answer. In the second one, as it was a very difficult question for me, I said, wow, that's definitely a difficult question. Let me think about it. I think, and this is how you can just think of the ideas because I did the same thing. Maybe, for example, for the second question, I had some ideas of the occasions that people have to wait for something. But the second question, do you think people who can't wait invent new technologies? I had no idea what I should have talked about. So instead, I started my answer using this booster because I wanted to think of what I really wanted to say. And then I had no idea, so I just kept talking and uh, gave some explanations and then gave an example. I talked about the person who has invented or the inventor of uh, the, some of the new technologies here, the inventor of cell phone. And I named this person Martin Cooper, but this is just a name that I made up. I don't know who was the inventor of cell phone. I just mentioned a name and then I explained about the life of this person, like how he went under, he lost everything, but then he tried to just gain and achieve everything once again. And that was a big accomplishment for this person. I just made it up. This is not true. I faked my answer because first of all, I had nothing to say. I had no information and I needed an example here. And secondly, I knew some very good collocations and vocabulary about success, accomplishments, and failure. So I just went off the topic, faking my answer, because I wanted to use my vocabulary here. And finally, talking about the connectives and conjunctions I have used. For example, in my first one, in the first answer, I use for instance, which means for example, however, which means but, like, when I want to give examples here. And nevertheless, 
when you want to show the contrast. Nevertheless, nonetheless, however, or but. In the second one, I used because to give the reason. As a result, which means so, to talk about the result. And for example, which is another term for, for instance. Also, when you want to just talk about the same thing or you want to add more information. In the third answer, I used however, again, so, because I wanted to talk about the result, as well, and though, which was to show the contrast, although or though. So this is how you can give your answers. I just try to give you some good answers. I try to be perfect because I wanted to teach you some vocabulary, collocations, fillers, boosters, and connectives. And you should always remember to paraphrase the examiner's question, which means not to repeat the same words that you hear in the question. Your answers may be totally different and it's okay. It is all a matter of time and practice and the strategies. And now you're learning what you can do because maybe you face some unfamiliar topics, you have no information or vocabulary for that. So one thing we learned together today was to fake your answer or go off the topic. Try to practice this one. Very well, guys. Just like what we did today, you can look for speaking questions, give your own answers to them, record yourself, and then analyze your answers. If you want to be evaluated by us, Book an online speaking mock test with our examiners. It will make a big difference, trust me. In the next videos, we will work on the next parts. I wish you best of luck and see you very soon.